Okay, just just a moment. Nelly. Hello, Nelly. I'm here and I'm recording. Hello, Hello Nelly. I'm on another computer, yeah. so I look kind of different. Yeah. Yeah, we know that uh, it was a very uh, rich presentation and you were recording it, so we are aware of that fact. So, um, so we have, we can start our presentation. Um, so, I would, it is, it gives me a big pleasure to introduce one of my most talented students, uh, Lindsay Bordenaro. She's a senior at Mount St. Mary College, and I had a pleasure to have her in my class, uh, Methods of Social Studies, where I challenge students to use technology. And um, we also had a very interesting project on Peace World Project, where they were uh, supposed to teach economics using, uh, or economics, or to teach uh, American Revolution using uh, iMovie and uh, students were not uh, aware of the tools and um, and I also exposed them to a smart board and they were learning and teaching using these resources uh, during the class and this summer uh, I uh, proposed um, we have a student research program it's summer program and uh, professors, faculty, um, uh, write a proposal inviting students to join them to explore uh, research topics. And it's in different fields, science, history. Uh, but uh, so I propose to explore iPads. And uh, of course, Lindsay, well, there were several people uh, who applied for this project, but um, but Lindsay uh, got got the project. Uh, she got the scholarship. It's uh, fifteen hundred uh, dollars for months of study, and uh, so I would like to now uh, give the floor to Lindsay, and I mute my mic. Lindsay, you are on. Hello everyone, my name's Lindsay, as Dr. Smirnova said, and I did my oh, presentation okay, on iPadagogy, the expanding use of iPads in the classroom. So as Dr. Smirnova was talking about, I did a program called Shore, and I'm going to explain that in a few minutes, but I just wanted to introduce you to my team. So Dr. Smirnova was my <laughs> advisor. So she was in charge of me, but we also collaborated with two others, and that's Clarissa Rosario, who uh, especially did Web 2.0, that's what her, what her research was on. And then uh, Dr. Bojan was her advisor, but he also oversaw us. Okay, so SURE, what does SURE stand for? It stands for Summer Undergraduate Research Experience. And what our goal is through SHORE 2013 is to explore the utilization of learning technology, specifically Web 2.0 and iPads, by teachers at elementary and middle school levels. Um, I conducted a survey, and if you see, the survey is hyperlinked, and anyone with the link can view it. So if you'd like to take it and you are a teacher, please go right ahead. Um, I also interviewed uh, teachers in the high school level as well as elementary level to see what the difference between the two were. Um, then I analyzed the data, and I plan on presenting again in September. Okay, so why did I choose SHORE? Um, I was engaged in it just because I've never done research before. Let me go here. Oh, okay. I can do that for you. Okay, but why did I choose SHORE? I chose SHORE just because I've never done research before, and a lot of elementary teachers are doing that now, and I figured I might as well jump on the bad wagon as well. So here's the link. All right, and then how did it all start? Uh, Dr. Smirnova touched on it before with BizMovie. Uh, that was the start to me really getting into using technology and actually liking it. Uh, the first time I've ever had a class with a smart board and 
projectors. I was nervous and afraid because I didn't think I was actually going to like it. But it turns out through the social studies methods class, we use so much technology. And uh, Dr. Smirnova kind of broadened our horizons with everything. So that really made me want to get more into technology and see how it really works. And then why did I choose the position I did? Um, I chose iPads specifically because they are almost in every single classroom now, um, elementary, middle school. Uh, specifically, I will be certified for first through sixth grade. Uh, therefore, I really do need to know how to use the iPad, what apps are good, and if they're effective or not. That's the main uh, problem here. OK. So my topic is iPadagogy, and my main focus is to see if iPads are effective in the elementary schools and the middle schools. All right, so let's talk about iPadagogy. Uh, when you hear the word iPadagogy, what comes to mind? If you just want to type in the chat box below, don't be shy. Using iPad as method or resource. iPad Goji uh, involving the use of Apple product. Okay. So art, science, teaching. Okay, is it the art and science of teaching with an iPad? Uh, Pedagogy plus iPad. Okay, you're all very right. Uh, my advisor, Dr. Smirnova, I believe, came up with the term iPad Goji. So what we came to believe is that iPod, iPadagogy is designing a curriculum with the help of iPads and technology as well as Web 2.0. Does everyone know what Web 2.0 is? If you just want to type yes or no in the chat box. Okay, that's one yes. Good. All right, everyone knows what Web 2.0 is. All right, so now let's take another game. Uh, Please take a guess as to when the first iPad came out. Does anyone know? Can you guess a year? Two years ago. Does anyone else have input? Five years ago. OK, we'll stop guessing. So the first one came out in 2010. So January 27, 2010. And in, in stores came out April 3rd, 2010. So every day, about 750 iPads are sold. But on that first day, 300,000 were sold. So that's a lot of iPads. Okay, so now let's talk about my research a little bit. Uh, what do I plan to do and why do it? So my plan is for professional development for local teachers. Um, and it will be good for myself as well, because I'll be able to learn more. Um, locate available grants for IT infrastructure and professional development. Um, this way, other schools can get grants for iPads if they are effective in their classroom. Um, also, uh, to identify current technological needs in the classroom and potential use of technology by the teachers. So whether or not everyone needs an iPad or just the teacher, uh, we'll see how it goes. And also to establish a closer collaboration between Mount St. Mary and other school districts. So that gives us a better relationship. OK, so what do people say about textbooks? Uh, they say that children have heavy backpacks, uh, but they need the textbooks, right? So now with the iPad, what can we do? We can put our textbooks on the iPad. So I'll actually, I'll put the link in the, um, okay, I'll do it on the other one. I'll put the link in the, in the box for you. But it's a great article about uh, the 500 pound textbook and how children are always walking around uh, with scoliosis because of it. Um, now, my advisor once said to me that uh, one simple way of understanding our pedagogical theory of iPads is that we don't want them to just become replacements for notebooks and textbooks. We want them to be objects to think with. We want students using them to mess around with the world around them and their courses of study. So we're not just getting rid of the textbook. Uh, we're allowing other tools to help them learn. Okay. 
So I also have a iMovie prepared for you. So that's using Web 2.0 as well. Um, so can everyone see that? The movie that I have? Yes? OK. Now iBooks has a bookshelf. Looks like this, where you have all your books. If you want to read one, you just saw what it looks like. It's terrific. You can go into portrait and see both pages if you'd like. And in addition to having your bookshelf and being able to read books, there's a button in the upper left corner of the bookshelf, which is the store. And we've created the new iBook store, fully integrated with the iBooks app. Uh, Cynthia, is it playing you now? To discover and purchase and download ebooks right onto your iPad. So you can discover books. We've got, of course, our top charts lists, the New York Times bestseller lists, and we've got five of the largest publishers in the world that are supporting us in this and are going to have all their books on the store. Hi, welcome to Evernote. Evernote is a way to capture all your experiences and access them from anywhere. Type a note, store documents, record audio, capture a photograph, or any other moment you want to remember. Evernote saves and synchronizes your digital life across all your devices. No matter where you are, Evernote is with you. Use it to stay more organized. Plan your next trip. Design and manage a project. Clear your paper clutter. Capture a moment and always find what you need. Life is full of experiences and Evernote helps you capture, manage, and remember them all. Welcome to So Creative. We're here to help teachers make class more fun and engaging and spend less time grading. So Crowdup works on any device, so as a teacher, I can open on my laptop and just open any web browser. My students can run on their smartphones, or they can open up their laptop and go to m.socrative.com. You can put notes in by hand, you can write them in, you can type them in, you can put in web snippets, little uh, pictures from the web, you can put in photos, you can uh, speak to it, it will record your voice, or if you're at a lecture, it will record the lecture or anything that's around. Uh, and the way that it organizes your notes is really cool. They have categories, subjects, and then notes. And let me show you what I mean. This is a category, the podcast. And if I tap that, I have subjects inside each one. So week five, and here's the individual notes. Here's week six, and I can shrink that up. So if you take a lot of notes, um, Notability has a way of keeping it very, very organized. Verify helps you tell stories with social media using tweets, Facebook posts, YouTube videos, Flickr photos, and other elements from the web. You just search for what you're looking for, and when you find what you want to include in your story, you drag and drop it right into the story. You can add your headline, introduction, and text. You can always add more to your story or move the elements around just with a drag and drop. When you're finished building your story, you can notify the people you've quoted, tweet it out, share it elsewhere online, or embed it on another site with an embed code. So once you enter the app Explain Everything, you can begin by adding a project using the plus sign in the top left hand corner. The tools are then quite intuitive, so you can choose a pen and the colour using the colour palettes and the pen symbol. If you make a mistake, you can simply erase it using the eraser on the left hand side, or you can select the whole object and click the red X and delete it. Selecting the square on the left hand side gives you a range of other options too. And there's also a pointer option if you want to draw attention to something particular. 
Now, in some subjects, you might want the students to use an image to explain something, and that's very easy to add using the button on the left-hand side that I'm showing you here. But the amazing thing about this app is that you can also insert a video for them to explain. If you want to add an extra slide, you can do this with the button that's second from the top on the left-hand side, and you can toggle between these slides with the bit at the bottom on the left that says slide one of two. The best thing about all of this is if you hit the red record button at the bottom in the center, you can record everything that's going on in the screen in this app. And so this allows students to create a movie and you can see exactly what their thought process is as they're explaining it to you. Hitting the play button will then play back everything that's been recorded so that students can decide whether they want to edit it or whether they're happy with their final product. What do we do at SoundCloud? We move music. For you, this means no more trouble receiving, sending, or distributing music via the web. Use a QR code. Take your mobile device, either a phone or tablet, and open up a QR code reader app. Once your QR code app has loaded, simply line up the square on your screen with the square of the QR code reader. Ta-da! It takes you to the web address automatically. And that is how you use a QR code reader. Okay, so that movie I made based off of the um, percentages that I got off of my survey. So about 50 people have taken the survey so far, and all everything that you saw there was from those people. So even though they said they were hesitant about using uh, Web 2.0 and iPads in the classroom or some other form of technology, uh, they are willing to use technology if they have the training. And most of them prefer face-to-face training and others prefer face-to-face uh, -face and through the internet just like we're doing here. Uh, now those are only some of the apps. Um, oh yes, Dr. Smirnover, you're right. I would love for you to participate in my survey if you'd like. Uh, that would be wonderful. It only takes about 15 minutes to take. Uh, but those are only some of the apps that are out there. There are millions of apps out there, um, some that we haven't even tried yet. I'm sure uh, many have, but I have not had the pleasure to do so yet. So, all right, so now how did I get started in this research? Uh, so in order to get started, I had to 
figure out how to use the technology first. Uh, so I watch these tutorials, and I'll even send them to you here as well. And I was able to grasp the concept. Uh, after that, okay, um, I had to think about the Common Core. Uh, since the Common Core is rapidly taking over the school system, it's important to know what their thoughts on technology are and if they think it's okay to use in the classroom. And after doing my research on that, I noticed that they love technology and they've even incorporated it into the Common Core. Uh, so that's listed below as well. Okay, so this I will also send you. As I said before, there are so many apps out there. And these are a few websites that will show you a few of the apps and how to use them in the classroom. So. More attention to the frames and the backwards. Um, so the question was, um, some people pay more attention to their phones and the blackboards. Um, I would agree in college sometimes if it's a larger class, but if it's smaller, not as much. Um, in the iPads, uh, through elementary school and middle school, they have a lot of security on them. So they can't play games and they can't go to sites they're not supposed to be on. And usually the teacher has them in smaller groups so that she can or he can look at what they're doing and see everything that's going on. Okay. All right, so a lot of teachers ask me, how do you use the apps in the classroom? And what, what's the best way to use an iPad in the classroom? Um, so many use the iPad as like a projector. Uh, many use it to manage the classroom, to get them in groups and have um, everyone share information together. Um, others access student work, like on Google Drive. Um, you can use it with the Chromebooks and with the iPads. Um, access files, again, same thing, and uh, make instructional media. You saw with Storify and Orasma, all of these other apps, um, the students are making these projects. Okay, so what are my future plans? Um, I plan on presenting at the Sure Symposium in September, the end of September. Um, I will also create uh, more research to do while I'm student teaching in the spring. I plan to see if they really are effective because I will be using them in my classroom. Um, and then at the end of the year, I will present that research in Finland, and I'll be one of the first undergrad students to ever present there. And then hopefully after this, I'll obtain my doctorate. Uh, one other thing that I found interesting about this whole um, wonderful uh, research presentation was that high schools actually find it very interesting that um, they love using the iPad, whereas in elementary schools, uh, they would rather use the smart board just because the smart board presentations are geared more towards the elementary level, not so much the high school level. So I found that very interesting, and I plan on doing more research on that as well. So, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, yes? Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Um, actually, they, uh, they have deals now for schools where you can buy the iPad for a bit cheaper if you buy them in bulk. And they also come with the case as well. Um, so Argentina, I don't know if you're looking for good deals, but they do have them. Um, Okay, what is my favorite app? Okay, I loved Storify. I thought that was fantastic. I loved making my own story and putting in everything I could uh, between music and my own words. Uh, you can change the different fonts and everything. It's also very fun to use. 
uh, with a lot of elementary school te uh, students because they love using it too because they have so much freedom. Um, I also love Google Docs. Where can we follow your? Oh, I have a blog. Um, I have not posted recently, but I will be as soon as I start uh, school again, which is on Monday. So um, I will give you a link to that as well. I've had a very expensive drinking you know, I, I don't really have an answer uh, for will the price change or not. Um, I hope they do uh, because there will be so many older models. I feel as if um, they will, the price will go down, but I'm not 100% positive. I would love it if they did. Uh, they're about, they're pretty expensive <laughs> right now. But as I said, for schools, if you buy them in bulk, they're cheaper. So here is my link for my blog. Okay. Oh, and then there's another question. Do you have a research question? I do have a YouTube channel. Um, if you, if do you want me to send that to you as well? Um, do you have a research question for your student practice? Um, I don't yet. I think right now it's just to see if they're actually, um, it, the question is, do you have a research question for your student practice? And right now I just want to find out if they're effective or not, or if you're spending all this money and it's not actually helping the student think critically and learn more. But we'll see. I, I believe that is what I would like to focus on. Research question. Um, yeah, actually, they have another program in India where they have this bus, um, and they're not tablets or anything, but there's computers on the bus. Um, it's in a few areas of the world, and the students go into the bus and they have their computer and technology time. Um, so if iPads aren't good, you could also get into a program like that. I believe it's called Firefly or something like that. Is that what you read about, Cynthia? Firefly, I think? Um, the Action Research Project. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah. The, the Action Project is what I'll be doing student teaching. But we have not discussed exactly what we're doing yet. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions? What questions do you have? Um, I don't know. I don't think I have any questions. All right. Um, well, Lindsay, um, Lindsay was brave enough to be the last during this day, long day. And imagine, Lindsay, uh, some people who are from 5 o'clock in the morning following all the presentations during this day. And uh, so it, it was a really a pleasure 
to hear and yeah. see you and uh, see how smart, intelligent, and beautiful you are. Because <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you are um, you are really opening horizons for yourself, and uh, this will open doors for many venues in your life and of course I hope that you continue exploring and never stop learning uh, and I think those people who are in your session and in this conference they are all lifelong learners they some, some are very accomplished people they already uh, finished their dissertations but they continue learning and they continue exploring and uh, and then sharing that's what today's world is about is about about learning and sharing because sharing is caring today's <laughs> <laughs> motto and so um, it would be great if you all uh, support me in applauding uh, Lindsay today uh, mm -hmm. And Lindsay will present uh, September 19th. There will be a um, college wide uh, symposium where all the research students present their projects. And that's our hope that Lindsay, during her student teaching, she will uh, apply some of the apps and, um, and use iPad in her classroom, provided school has those and uh, she can use also one of our college iPads and if she doesn't buy one uh, and uh, so and then she will also continue researching and um, by December she will write proposal um, to participate in a media conference uh, in Finland and uh, so we wish you luck, Lindsay, in your Thank student you. teaching. It will be uh, really a great experience. And I'm sure you will charm everybody. And students <laughs> will love you because you are so creative. I saw it in the field work um, <laughs> during the course, how students loved uh, you. Uh, really motivating them, encouraging them, uh, using uh, with a smart board, with the iPads. They used QR code for students to explore uh, about American Revolution. It was just amazing experience. Students are still talking about this. <laughs> so, um, okay, so if, uh, yeah, there is a question. I don't believe there are um, iPads or tablets that support Flash players. I believe that's a big problem as well. All right. 